Very delighted to say, as promised, I have on the line with me Nick Robinson, BBC political editor. Thank you for joining me, Nick. Nice to be here. It's great to have you on today. Um, indeed, it's been, I've been trying to track down uh, Nick for a while, so thanks again for, for joining me. Um, just going to kick off with a few questions. Obviously, you are uh, the BBC's political editor. Um, I've been reading, and it says that you're obviously very interested in politics from a young age. Uh, what, what was it that attracted you to politics? Good question, that. Actually, my best friend's dad was a radio presenter on Radio 4. Um, and uh, there's a program on Radio 4 called the Today Program. Uh, quite a lot of your listeners may listen to it. Other people might choose Good Morning Scotland, which is a bit like it. Obviously, others will be listening to Radio West 5 instead. But he was my best friend's dad, Brian Redhead. I used to see him when I went home from school because his house was on the way back. And, of course, because he was working terribly early in the morning, he was quite often home by the afternoon. And I just thought the whole debate about how you made the country better, the argument about politics were fascinating. There was nobody involved in politics in my family, actually, um, but I found it very interesting. And do did, did you ever feel that maybe you'd be better at doing the job yourself as a politician? <laughs> no, I was, I was involved as a student a little bit, actually. A lot of people who go into reporting, oddly, do have a bit of a background of having been involved. But no, I always wanted to be a journalist from about the age of, oh, horribly young, sounds like William Hague saying he read Hansel when he was 16, but from the age of about 15, 16, I knew I wanted to be a journalist, actually. So I, uh, I did what you're doing. I presented a radio program on hospital radio. I tried to set up a radio station when I was at university, which in those days was much harder than it is now because there was no internet radio in the way there is. You had to get a license for a community radio station. They were really quite new in the 1980s when I was at university. And, uh, and then I joined, um, joined the BBC. Wow. So um, what's it like you know, being uh, in so, uh, so close to politicians such as the Prime Minister? Do you ever find it a wee bit surreal that you're, you're so close and getting to interview them? There are occasions where my family giggle because I say I've just had a text message from somebody important and they find that very funny or when we're sitting at the breakfast table and the phone goes and they hear me say somebody's name and they think, oh, that's somebody rather important, isn't it? Uh, so, yes, there are occasions when it's odd, but uh, I suppose the, the thing about life is you discover people are people, really, whatever job they're in, uh, whether they're the doctor in the hospital or the radio presenter or the prime minister or the leader of opposition, they're people in the end and you get to know them as people and you get to know a little bit of what makes them tick what makes them angry what makes them frustrated what makes them amused and i suppose that's part of the pleasure of journalism is that you get to see behind the scenes you get to see a little bit that other people don't get to see and i'm always the i'm the bore in the pub or uh, over a cup of coffee who when people say politicians are all the same aren't they dreadful my mum sometimes says i don't know how you could spend so much time with them i'm, I'm always arguing for them uh I, I, in the end most of the people i meet in politics are decent people who genuinely want to do the right thing on the other hand of course they've got big egos so do doctors and teachers sometimes on the other hand sometimes they're more interested in themselves true of scientists or lawyers there are lots of people who as well as wanting to do a good thing are interested in themselves politicians aren't really much different to that indeed and you mentioned earlier just that um you were involved in politics uh, a wee bit younger and i'm aware you were the president of the oxford university conservative you association up my shameful path yeah you? well um obviously being in the bbc is it's known for having to be unbiased do you ever find that a wee bit hard at the end of the day we are all human so we all have our own yeah. views well, full enough, and I'm writing a book about this at the moment, it comes out in the autumn, and I've, I've addressed the whole question of how can anybody who's ever had any views really be impartial? And what I say about this is that impartiality is something that you strive for. It's, it's a bit like for people who are married, it's a bit like having a good marriage. You don't just do it. You're, you're, you're striving for it all the time. And the reason I think it is possible that, say, Robin Day, for your older listeners, he was the first ever presenter of Question Time. He ran for the Liberal Party, as it then was, to be a parliamentary candidate. I won't go through other people, all sorts of people who've had political interests uh, before they became journalists and sometimes after they've been journalists. The reason it is possible, though, for them to do it is because there's such a history in the BBC and such a value placed on the idea of we don't take sides. We are not on anybody's side. It is our job to explain to listeners and to viewers and to readers all sides. And these days, of course, it is all sides. It used to just be easy. You used to just say there were two 
two sides in politics, the government and the opposition. But, you know, talking to you, I'm in London, you're in Scotland. That no longer has any sense at all. Of course, there are four big parties and there are other smaller parties in the Scottish Parliament. Uh, in London, of course, it isn't just a Labour Tory debate. There are the Greens and UKIP and British National Party. So what you just have to try and do, I think, as a reporter is say, it's not about my opinions, it's not about my views, it's trying to find a way of summarising and explaining what all the people involved in this are thinking. Yeah, and uh, just finally, um, I'm 15 years old, I'm, I'm one, I would say I'm in a few, I'm in a minority, because I'm very interested in politics, I watch, you know, the Andrew Marr show, etc, and I often bore my friends with <laughs> political issues, um, what advice would you give to young people such as myself, um, who would like to get into broadcasting, and how would, you, how would you say that people like me go about it? I love this, this is a free interview while everybody's, uh, while everybody's listening, free job application yeah. while you're doing it. I think you're doing exactly the right thing, the reason I'm on your programme is you're a little bit cheeky but you're a little bit uh, if you don't find this embarrassing charming as well in your request for doing it and i think i always say to people who want to go into broadcasting never hesitate to ask because a lot of time people don't pick up the phone or the email and ask someone that they uh, admire or someone whose job they'd like to do and say, well, look, how about it? Could I come and see? And I just remember when I was 15 and then when I was at university, I was a bit cheeky. I asked people to do things and they came to give speeches. I mean, one of the reasons I ended up as a journalist was not just because my best friend's dad was in it, because I asked people to come and talk when I was at university. And they did. I got to go and see behind the scenes at ITV, at ITN, producing the news i got to go behind the scenes at news night just because i asked so uh, you're doing the right thing by the sounds of it robert you're on the right course already thank you very much and nick robinson it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today to have you on my show and um who knows it might get you on uh, in the future at some point who knows but well is you. it raining as hard um, it's actually not raining too much at the moment ah, well but... you see i've always thought it was a it was a myth that down south the weather was better yeah. it is absolutely belting down in london so well to all your listeners, have a lovely day.